We are very pleased to formally introduce our president of hockey operations, Chris Armstrong. As a kind reminder, please state your name and affiliation when asking a question. Thanks, Jeffrey. Uh, first of all, it's a pleasure to be here with all of you, finally get the opportunity to meet you, and I'm certainly looking forward to getting to know each of you better as we, as we go along here. Just wanted to open with a few uh, comments, um, thank yous, in fact. Uh, thank you to Ryan and Ashley Smith and Smith Entertainment Group for the opportunity to lead this organization forward. Uh, I've known Ryan for over a decade now, and never did I think that our relationship would lead to this place, and uh, feel extremely fortunate and grateful for the opportunity, something that I have a great passion and connection to, uh, something that, uh, you know, a couple of years ago was just an idea that we were able to bring to fruition, and the opportunity to see that through um, and be the custodian of that uh, community asset for, for Utah um, here in Salt Lake City. Uh, is something I'm really excited about and looking forward to. My wife Abigail is here. We're thrilled to move from LA. Uh, we're already here. We took our apartment uh, earlier this week, and I'm excited to be uh, to be a member of this community and and to help build something extremely special for this fan base and um, for this state. So, I also want to acknowledge uh, where I came from, and um, so with great thanks to Casey Wasserman. Um, you know, I've, the experiences and opportunities that he gave me over the last 14 years really shaped um, the person and the career that I've had. And without that, you know, I, I wouldn't have an opportunity like this. Uh, I wouldn't have had an opportunity to meet people like Ryan and Ashley Smith uh, over time. So I wanted to, uh, to acknowledge that here. And, um, and also, you know, I've had the great opportunity where we're doing everything in a much accelerated fashion given the circumstances here. Um, of obtaining this uh, franchise and, and moving it forward uh, for October the 8th, our exciting uh, opening night. But uh, I've had this great opportunity to get to know some really special people in a short period of time, starting with our GM, Bill Armstrong, who I think has done just an unbelievable job and doesn't get uh, enough credit uh, for how he handled uh, the uncertainty and the difficult times uh, that the team faced uh, over the last few months and, and really provided uh, that guidance and uh, stability to the group um, and to move them forward, to continue to move the organization forward. And I want to recognize that a lot of work was done long before Smith Entertainment Group arrived um, at, with this opportunity. And a lot of work has been done since. Um, and Bill has been unwavering in his leadership. Uh, Coach Bear has been, uh, uh, you know, an, an unbelievably a stable force with our players. Uh, and I think that needs to be recognized because for what we're trying to do um, under the circumstances that we're doing it and the timeline that we're doing it, you need quality people in leadership positions. And, and that was certainly something we recognized early in this process is that we had that. And if we can give them the support and resources to reach, to help the team reach its full potential, I think we're gonna be very successful in a short period of time and that's what gets us really excited. Um, you know, having just been through my first, uh, my first draft with the group, I, I want to say that I was extremely impressed uh, by the leadership of our amateur scouting group led by Daryl Plandowski and Ryan Jankowski. Uh, got a, an opportunity to see uh, the staff that Bill, Daryl, and Ryan have assembled together, the collaboration, uh, the communication, um, the camaraderie between that group uh, was really impressive for us to bear witness to. Uh, and I'm not surprised by the exceptional results that we had uh, in the draft and, and, and the results predating our involvement with the team in the last several years of, uh, of making some unbelievable draft selections uh, that we got to see firsthand in development camp up in Park City this week. Uh, and then, you know, obviously also got to see and observe Bill's process uh, in executing the trades for Mikhail and John, who are great additions to our group, allow us to move forward, but preserve the opportunity for some of our young players to take that step forward this year. Um, I think was, uh, was excellent for me to see as well, our head of pro scouting, Alan Heppel, uh, and the staff that he and Bill have assembled together, world class. Um, again, got to be in the trenches with them, see that process. We feel very confident about the people that that we have the good fortune to now work with and uh, call members of our organization. Uh, and that gives us great optimism moving forward. So that's it for me and uh, happy to take questions. Uh, Chris, Alex, Tim up with the Hockey News. Uh, good to see you again. Uh, Chris, ju just take us back. So, I mean, like you said, you know, Casey Wasserman was the one that gave you the opportunities all those years ago. And Ryan Smith and Ashley Smith have given you this chance now to 
be a part of this special organization. Can you just talk about how your how your kind of your opportunity? What kind of was the first opportunity that you kind of got an inkling like, okay, maybe this might lead me to a place one day where I might be a part of an NHL franchise? Alex, I don't. I think that's a good question. You know, I don't think I ever. Um, allowed myself to to see this necessarily this end end result right um, what I would tell you is uh, this kind of goes back a couple years uh, after Ryan and Ashley had acquired the jazz um, and we were actually all on a flight together with Danny Ainge at the time Ryan was recruiting Danny to the jazz and we were talking about a whole host of topics, including the potential for the Olympics to come here. And Ryan asked me for, for my perspective on hockey. He was starting to develop this interest for hockey and had this idea that it could be quite complementary to what Smith Entertainment Group was trying to build for Utah. Um, winter sport, uh, fast growing, emerging uh, young market, and uh, asked me, knowing my connection and, and passion and background in hockey, what my perspective was. And that really started to snowball. First, he got Danny done, which was an important and key step to bring, uh, to bring DA to, uh, to Utah, which we all, which we all benefit from. Um, and then we started to go down this path of exploration with the National Hockey League to see what their interests might look like in the future for expansion and what opportunities there might be for Utah to be a part of that conversation. And it was clear to me from the very first meeting we had with the commissioner, uh, Commissioner Bettman and, and, uh, and Deputy Commissioner Bill Daly, that they could see the dynamicism of Ryan uh, from an ideas perspective, from an energy perspective. I know leaving that meeting that they saw the potential in Ryan as an owner and what he could bring to the league. And, and, and frankly, you know, my context in that meeting as his friend, um, it gave me great enthusiasm for, for what he was going to turn that meeting into one day. For me, this is um, what I would say, it's a dream scenario to work in hockey, period. Anybody in our organization would tell you that. All of our players would tell you they're living their dream of playing in the National Hockey League. I'm living my dream of working in the National Hockey League. There's no, there's no doubt about that. But what I would tell you, what drew me to this opportunity, and this is probably the only opportunity that would have caused me to leave Wasserman, frankly, um, was the opportunity to work with SEG. The opportunity to work with not only Ryan and Ashley, but Chris Barney, our Chief Commercial Officer for the Jazz and, and for Utah Hockey Club, Caroline Klein, our head of communications, uh, Jim Olson, the president of the Jazz, John Larson, our CFO. These are all outstanding first-class people. Ryan brings a tech entrepreneur um, dynamic energy to the workplace at SEG, which I could feel from day one. And that's as much as anything else what drew me to this opportunity is to be part of that group and to help drive the ambitions of that group, the objectives, not just for Utah Hockey Club, but for Utah, for Salt Lake City, for what the Delta Center can become, for what the Utah Jazz can become. The opportunity to get in the trenches with those kinds of people and achieve something unique and special uh, is something that everybody here, I think, um, should view as a great opportunity to be a part of. There's gonna be e exceptional things happening in this market for many years to come. I think it's gonna reshape the landscape here, and I think the rest of North American professional sports is gonna take great notice of what's happening here. Uh, welcome, Chris. Matt Coma from the NHL.com. Um, um, just f getting things started here, what are some of the goals or accomplishments that you like to see in your first year here with the Utah program? Well, we, we want to establish an immediate connection, which we're already feeling from this local market and community. Uh, first and foremost, uh, if, if your question is on the ice or off the ice, maybe it's both. On the ice, we want to continue to take steps forward, obviously. We want to be a team that brings maximum effort to our fan base every single night and that continues to take steps towards its potential each and every day. Whether that's practice or whether that's in games, our fans in Utah are not gonna be shorted on effort. That, that is very clear, spending any amount of time with, with Coach Bear, and uh, that is certainly clear uh, from the top down with Bill's leadership as our, as our GM and the expectations that he set throughout the organization. Um, off the ice, we wanna, we wanna maximize the fan experience with, you know, we're obviously renovating this building in a pretty significant way to make it uh, 
um, to make it optimized for hockey, and that's going to take some time. So in the meantime, we want to be able to get as creative as we can to create the best fan experience possible and get as many people in this building in the interim as possible. You know, there's a lot of conversation about the partial view seats, limited view, obstructed, whatever you want to call them. I see that as an opportunity to get people in the building at an affordable price point, expose them to hockey, expose them to the energy of this environment, and create, hopefully, fans for life. Um, so for us, those are, those are the immediate objectives. Obviously, we've had unbelievable results on the ticketing side already, unbelievable positive results on, on sponsorship. There's more to come in that regard in the next several weeks. Chris Barney and his team have done an unbelievable job in that respect. And, and so we want to create a, an environment where our players have all the support, all the resources they need to keep moving forward. Do we have any other questions for Chris? Uh, for just speaking on the on ice stuff, going through the draft process and seeing these guys up at camp, if you've had an opportunity to see these guys, what is your first reaction to these prospects that you've brought in this week? Great excitement, for sure. Um, as I say, there's a lot of work that's been done for, for a number of years to assemble this group of prospects uh, and the roster um, that, uh, that we'll be receiving in training camp in, in, in September, which will come quickly, believe me. Um, I think uh, we, we've got unbelievable size and speed um, and high, most importantly, high character people. These kids have been great this week, getting to know them in Park City, their work ethic, their enthusiasm, the way they're bonding and connecting. Um, you know, we're really excited. As Ryan has said publicly, when we went through this process, it came back to the people, right? Um, the opportunity here was to acquire uh, a first class roster. Um, an amazing, uh, um, an amazing group of prospects, and, and and obviously certainly significant draft capital, but but most importantly, amazing people from the hockey operations department to the coaching staff. I mean, I, I want to recognize Aaron Bellello too, who's our executive uh, of hockey operations and um, executive assistant of hockey operations. She's been unbelievable under incredibly tough circumstances, relocating all these players, relocating our hockey operations staff, working closely with our team at SEG. Uh, putting on development cam, helping to execute this game today. You know, that's that's what we that's what we acquired in our view is those high quality people. And if we can give those people the additional support and resources to to do their jobs, they're going to execute in a phenomenal way. You know, Chris, um, um, I, I got a I, of course I've been around you a couple of days now, Park City, and been around you today, obviously. And um, I also got a chance to listen to Ryan's. Uh, press conference before the NHL draft last week and um, he really talked about how he saw you and him you and him and uh, Bill Armstrong as business partners he doesn't see you as a president of hockey ops or he doesn't see Bill as the GM etc cetera, etc cetera, etc cetera. you know for for him to for him to say that like what does that say about the about the about the the work you guys have done so far and the vision you guys all share in the front office as a as a hockey operations team well, I think, Alec, for us to reach the goals that we have for this organization, which is, is obviously to win the Stanley Cup and, and, and the ability to do that more than once, is that we all are, if we're all aligned with the same objective and the same goal, then we're partners in that effort, right? And so there, there's no job too big or too small for anybody in this organization. If it helps us to take a step forward, then the expectation is that we're going to do it. We're going to do it together, and we're going to have tough conversations, and we're going to make ourselves better from having those difficult and tough conversations. Um, I think that's that speaks to the the way that this ownership group, I think, is going to try to do things a little bit differently than than other organizations, and that's where we see the opportunity. Is let's take our own unique and novel approach towards this, right? We're not trying to reinvent the wheel, but let's take this opportunity to set things up the way that we think it can be successful and do that from day one. All right, thank you very much, Chris. I now invite Bill, Bear, and Mikhail back to the stage for a photo opportunity. If you guys have any one-on-one -on -one requests, please reach out to me, Michaela, or Adrian in the back. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, Chris in the middle. 